Hi guys, I'm Boris Pete, and welcome to another episode of PC Repair for Dummies. Okay gang, I get emailed this question a lot, so uh, I'm going to address it today. Today, I'm going to show you how to recover data from a computer that doesn't start anymore. Okay, this is going to be fun. Let's get into it. So here we have a computer that has a motherboard issue. This computer will not start anymore. Now, there's various reasons that computers won't go, but, uh, you know, power supply, motherboard, RAM, whatever. But this machine is a very old machine and not worth repairing. But the customer has asked me to recover all the data. So I've removed the hard drive from this machine. Now, this is an old machine. It's an old style, what they call an IDE hard drive. There's two different types of connections on hard drives. There's IDE or there's SATA, which is the later one. But this is an old machine, so the purpose of today's exercise, we're going to recover the data of this. So I've removed the hard drive. The hard drive just sits up in there. I've unplugged it and removed it, and now we're going to recover the data of this. This is going to be fun. The simplest and easiest way to recover data off a hard drive is to buy yourself one of these. Now, this is called a hard drive caddy. It's a USB caddy, and this one will take both SATA uh, and IDE, and will also take laptop drives. Now, these are a pretty neat little gadget, these little docks, and uh, they're available on eBay for about $45. They are a, a pretty good investment, and I think that everyone should have one of these. I'm going to assume, however, that you don't have a hard drive dock, so I'm going to show you how to recover the data off this hard drive uh, just using uh, another computer. Now obviously you'll need access to a second machine and here's how it's done. The very first thing that you need to do is shut down the computer that you are going to use for the data recovery. So you need to shut it down completely and then you need to switch it off at the power. Now this is really really important. Yes, I know, you're all laughing because I'm still using Windows XP on my techie machine, but uh, believe it or not, XP is very, very good for data recovery, believe it or not. Okay, we'll wait for that to shut down and I'll show you the next step. Now that the machine is shut down, very, very important that we disconnect the power. Now that is absolutely vital. Alright, so we're going to disconnect the power. Now, most motherboards these days still have access to plug in an IDE machine. Uh, with this techie machine of mine, I've got an IDE ribbon here that I keep just for this exercise. If you're trying to recover data off a SATA drive, then once again, motherboards these days have all got SATA connections, and this is what a SATA connection looks like. This particular motherboard's got four SATA connections, so you can connect either IDE or SATA up, it doesn't really matter. Now what is vital though, that before you do this, a motherboard has a set of jumper pins across the back here where you can set the drive as a master or a slave. Now if this is the normal C drive in your computer, the one that uh, has your operating system on it, then the jumper pin will be set to master. You must remove that pin and set it across the slave. And motherboards, uh, motherboards, hard drives always have uh, some little words here that say slave, master, all sort of thing. Now I've already taken this one and set it across the slave. Now if you don't set it across the slave, what will happen when you plug this in and try and start this computer, it will try and boot from this drive. Now, of course, we don't want that. We just want this computer to recognise this drive as in it's an external drive or an extra drive. Okay, we're going to connect him up. Now, what we're talking about here today is basic data recovery. Now, this will only work if the hard drive still spools up, now that means if the hard drive is still fully functional and still working. Recovering data off a hard drive that doesn't spool up is a whole different ball game and we'll go into that in a separate video. Uh, we'll get into that another day. Alright, now what you also need to decide is where are you going to put the data that you're going to recover off this drive. So what I've done is I've plugged in a little external drive here, a little USB uh, 500 gig external drive and I'm going to recover the customer's data from this drive and I'm going to put it onto this drive here and then the customer can do whatever they want with it after that. Right, eh? let's plug him in and turn him on again. 
Now that the computer's restarted, we're going to go and make sure that it's recognised both the drives. Now it's recognised the USB portable hard drive that I plugged in and make sure that it's recognised the hard drive from the customer's computer that we're going to recover the data from. So we're just going to go to my computer, pull that up, and we can see here that yes it has the expansion drive here, drive number E, that is the USB drive, and the local disk F, that is the drive that, uh, that we've just plugged in. Now, your computer could assign any number of letters to this, but in this case, my machine has assigned the uh, customer's drive as local disk F, and the expansion drive here as local disk E. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the USB drive, Okay, so we've opened up the uh, USB drive. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder in there uh, to put all the customer's backup data in. Now the reason that you do that is just so that you know where the data is. All right, so in this case, we're going to uh, right click in the drive area. We're going to go new. My computer's on a go slow. We're going to go folder. And we're going to call it uh, customer backup. Obviously, you can call it whatever you like. Okay. Now, this is the way that I prefer to do it. I like to have two screens open at the same time. All right, we're going to go back into my computer and we're going to find the customer's drive, which is like with this F. We're going to double click on that, open it up. Now, everyone does this differently, but this is the way I like to do it. I like to have both screens open so that I can see what I'm doing. Now, data recovery, there's lots of perils and pitfalls. What we're talking about today is just basic, simple data recovery, and uh, we're assuming that everything is gonna go right. Okay, now, we can recover all these files provided that they're not password protected or hidden files. Now, if they're password protected, you have to reassign the permissions on the folders to copy them. Now, once again, I'm going to go into that on a whole different day, on a whole other video, because it is uh, a lot more intricate. But what we're assuming is that this, well, we already know because I've asked the customer, this machine was not password protected, so all the files will be open. Now, everything that you need, pretty much, will be in this folder here, Documents and Settings. That's pretty much where all their music's going to be, all their photos are going to be, all their Word documents are going to be, and those are the important things to most people. So, we're going to have a little bit of a look in here. I'm going to right click on it and just go properties because I want to see how big that file and folder is. So uh, we're just going to wait for that to um, run up and we'll see how big it is. Now, usually most customers have about 30 or 40 gig of data. Some customers have a lot more, but uh, in this case, I know that this woman has a lot of photos and a lot of music. So I'm assuming it's going to be about 30 or 40 gig. And did you see how I did that, gang? I right clicked on the folder and then I went down and just clicked on properties. And now I'm waiting for Windows to um, give me the size of that folder. It is taking a little while. So we've now ascertained that that folder is about 30 gig, which is about what I thought it would be. We're also going to just have a quick look through the customer's um, C drive here and uh, make sure that there's no other folders where they might have some stuff. And in this case there is, she's got a downloads folder here, it's 90 meg, so she'll probably want that. Okay, but in the meantime, first up, we're going to drag this documents and settings folder straight over and put it into the customer backup folder on the uh, USB portable drive. So it's just click and drag, Now you can do this uh, with XP, Vista or Windows 7. Click and drag, just drag from one folder straight across to the other and uh, Windows will automatically do it for you. Now, it's a 30 gig folder, and because I'm using Windows XP, and uh, this techie machine of mine is getting a little bit tired, it's going to take quite a while to transfer. Now, I would say 30 gig will probably take about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, if you have an older, slower machine, it could even take longer than that. But basically, you can just go away and leave that. Now, it's telling me, okay, 103 minutes. I don't think it's actually gonna take that long, but, um, if you get a Windows error message that pops up saying that it can't copy a file because it's corrupt or whatever, you just need to click on ignore all. 
Okay, so that means that it'll ignore any files that are a bit corrupt or for some reason they won't transfer across. Alright, so it's gone back down to 26, 25 minutes now, which is about right. So there you go guys, that's how you do basic data recovery. Quite simple, quite easy. Uh, like I said to you before, you should really purchase one of these docks, they are great, and they just plug straight into the USB. They save you having to pull your computer apart and uh, connect it up manually that way. Do you guys get excited about data recovery as I do? Oh my god, Peter! I think I'm turning into a geek! <laughs> Love yous, see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to comment, rate, and share this video.